My name is Stephanie Howison. I'm going to present measuring intelligence in infants and young children. Intelligence assessments have its roots 2200 years before Christ, when Chinese started testing with a large aptitude scale to select civil servants. Long ago, intelligence was defined as a unitary trait with an unhierarchical development. The first attempt to measure intellectual capacity was made by Francis Galton using a sensory discrimination and motor coordination test. Later on, in 1904, Alfred Binet was measuring intellectual skills in French school children without knowing that he was going to start a research movement in the area of intelligence measurement. The intelligence testing movement started in the 19th and 20th century. By that time, the main purpose of the assessments was the diagnosis of mental disorders. Among some important names in the history of intelligence measuring, we found Arnold Hessel and Bailey. Hessel is known as the pioneer of infant assessment. He developed his first assessment in 1925 with the purpose of identifying infants in need of assistance in welfare and hygiene. The assessment was composed of 144 items covering the areas of motor, language, adaptive, and social skills. Hessel believed that development was influenced by genetics and maturation process. Bailey was the creator of the California First Year Mental Scare in 1933. This assessment was made for infants between 1 and 30 months. For Bailey, intelligence was emergent throughout infancy and functionally unique at different ages. Other assessments were based on Piaget's theory, which viewed development as hierarchical that occurred in different stages and was dependable of interaction with the environment. Scales based on this theory were usually made for infants between one month and two years old. Some examples of these assessments are Infant Psychological Developmental Scale, Cassidy Design Scale, and Albert Einstein scale of sensory motor development. This assessment measure intermediaries, object exploration, combination of objects, skills in prehension, object permanence, and functioning in three-dimensional space. Later on, between 1960 and 1970, development for neonatal assessment instrument skills for special population started. There is no official definition of intelligence and the concept has been changing over years. Shelton, 1989, unitary trait with a non-hierarchical development. Beers, 2009, ability to solve problems and to adapt and learn from experiences. Cohen, Swerdlick and Sturman, 2012, define intelligence as a capacity composed of multiple aspects that manifest in various ways across an individual's life. Intelligence article in 2015 define intelligence as multiple mental capabilities that include the abilities of reasoning, planning, problem solving, abstract thinking, comprehension of complex ideas, quick learning, learning from experience, and potential to do things. One of the principal intelligence theories it's multiple intelligence theory by Gardner. Gardner proposed the existence of eight types of intelligence which are related to the way in which the individual decides to learn and how it processes the information. Gardner defined the types of intelligence as follows. Verbal skills are the ability to think in words and use language to express meaning. Spatial skills is the ability to think three-dimensional. Musical skills is sensitivity to pitch, melody, rhythm, and tone. Interpersonal skills is the ability to understand oneself. Mathematical skills is the ability to carry out operation. Bodily kinesthetic skills is the ability to manipulate objects and be physically adept. Interpersonal skills is the ability to understand and interact with others effectively. Naturalistic skills is the ability to observe patterns in nature and understand natural and human systems. One of the advantages of Gardner's theory is that it helps to identify minority group individuals that were under-identified with conventional approaches.
The second theory to be discussed is Sternberg's triarchic theory, which proposes that intelligence comes in three forms. The three forms are analytical, which is defined as the ability to acquire and store information, retain or retrieve it, or to transfer information. It's also the ability to plan, make decisions, solve problems, and translate thoughts into performance. The second form is creative intelligence, or the ability to solve new problems quickly and familiar ones with a creative insight. Finally, practical intelligence is the ability to get out of trouble and get along with others. Among the purpose and uses of infant and young children intelligence assessments are the document delay or reset status, design intervention programs when needed, provide pretreatment and post-treatment information and predict future abilities. They also provide useful information about how the child thinks and process information. It's important to establish the purpose of the assessment because this helps to identify the type and characteristic of the assessment. The most common setting of use of assessment for infant and young children are schools and clinical settings. In schools, the intelligence assessments are useful in placement decisions. When administering an intelligence test, considerations must be taken. The examiner needs to have the necessary experience and knowledge of techniques and target population to administer the assessment. It is important to be familiar with the assessment so the process can be faster in order to obtain the infant's optimal performance making sure that the match of the infant being tested and the group for whom the test was developed and standardized correctly will comply with standardization sample. Ask what proportion of the infant score was due to chance error and what proportion to true score to guarantee reliability. Also, know which percent of the square value is due to the infant's chance fluctuations and which percent is a true reflection of the infant's ability to comply with validity. The testing situation should be taken into account. Testing situation include where is the evaluation taking place, timing of the evaluation, and the infant's health status at the moment of the evaluation. It is important to remember the value of parents' report in the evaluation process because they are a source of accurate and reliable information of the child's ability. The measure of intelligence that takes into account the child's mental and chronological age is called intelligence quotient or IQ. The term IQ was proposed by Wilhelm Stern. Mental age is the typical intelligence level found at certain chronological age, and the actual age of the child is known as the chronological age. The IQ score depends on both, mental and chronological. Q is stable over time, substantially the same at all age levels. The equations on the bottom means test performance results from the interaction of the individual's genetic constitution and the social history. The following table show the classification of each IQ score group. Potential based assessments or individually administered IQ tests are good predictors of future scholar achievement. They are standardized tests with the purpose of controlling all the elements of the testing process except for the child responses. One of the most used assessments the, is the Stanford Binet Intelligence Scale 5th edition. The test is organized by age level from 2 years old to 90 years or more. It is composed of verbal and abstract tasks with items arranged from easy to difficult. The items measure ver verbal and nonverbal skills in a type of face-to-face -face interview. It is divided in four cognitive areas, verbal reasoning, quantitative reasoning, abstract or visual reasoning, and short-term memory. For the purpose of the assessment, mental age is the unit level on which individuals' performance is expressed. The second assessment is the Wechsler Intelligence Scale for Children 4th edition. The WISC was first made for adults instead of children, later on including children of school age. This assessment is mostly, mostly used in clinical settings. The Wechsler assessment is divided into verbal and nonverbal or performance, offering separate results for both. The Kaufman assessment battery for children 
is an intelligence and achievement test made for children between 2.5 and 12.5 years old. The two parts of the test are scored together and separate. For the Kaufman assessment, purpose intelligence is defined as a problem-solving ability, and the test emphasizes in memory, which help to reduce cultural disparities among black and white children. The KABC is translated to other languages and available for hearing-impaired children. Here, I present other types of assessments and the multidimensional assessments. Group tests were first used in the First World War, with educational purposes mostly. They are the most common assessment in the United States, with millions administered annually in the USA. This type of test include tests involving word meaning, verbal relationship, arithmetical reasoning, form classification, spatial relationship, and abstract symbolic material without including school instruction material directly. To avoid penalization of individuals that do not speak the language or which are more developed in certain areas that nonverbal and culture-free assessment were developed. Two examples of culture-free assessments are the Ravens Progressive Matrices, which uses graphic representations, orientation towards problem solving, abstraction, and classification and the David Eels test that uses only oral language and problem-solving familiar to lower-class children. Research show that unprivileged groups perform better in nonverbal tests. Development of culture-free assessments still in work in progress. Intelligence measuring is also surrounded by issues. For example, having knowledge of one's performance on the intelligence assessment can affect the individual's aspiration and motivation to obtain goals. Also, creativity is restricted because the individual is required to select a right answer or to think like the test maker. Finally, the appearance of divergent thinking test is establishing the practice of giving credit for the number, variety, and originality of the responses instead of following the conventional test which are based on convergent thinking. Cultural bias is one of the major issues in intelligence assessment. In the 2000s, test results were used for employment, graduations, promotions, college admissions, placement, and special education placement, which, because of the culture bias in test minorities, suffer social and educational consequences, because low scores equals limited opportunities. Most of the research in cultural bias has been made with African-American population. That's when they found that in the 19s, African-Americans and other ethnic groups scored 15 points lower than Americans. The Wechsler, Binet, and Peabody picture vocabulary tests were under scrutiny and examined for possible bias. Avoiding bias in intelligence tests is important because in, the two, in 2004, 43% of students in the United States public schools were culturally diverse, and that number has been increasing every year. To avoid violations to ethics, the Code of Ethical Principles should be followed. Also, parents should sign an informed consent and should be aware of the procedures and instruments in use. All the rules and considerations should be followed to avoid misdiagnosis of the child. The education of the Handicap Amendment establishes techniques to identify developmental delays, infants at risk, plan intervention services, and effective evaluation. Intelligence is influenced by family and school environment, and it increases during childhood. There are significant differences among certain races. For example, Latino children are better on performance part, while African American on verbal part. Poverty affects negatively IQ scores and it was found that scores are dependable of the parents' occupation.